This is not another Rode Go Wireless system review. There's lots of them out there that will tell you the great football fields that you can put between the transmitter and the receiver, um, or ones that will tell you how great it sounds. We can all agree it works over a decent distance and it sounds pretty darn good. Um, what I want to cover in this video are three things. One is what does this, the DB button, actually do on the receiver? Because I've heard some maybe not quite correct things. Um, I want to talk about the battery life and something really interesting that happens just as the batteries are dying. Um, that's kind of something I hadn't heard documented, hadn't heard in, any, in the reviews. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about is using these in cold weather because I live in Canada and, you know, we have winter and it gets cold sometimes. So I hadn't seen anything in writing that says you can actually use these other than indoors. So let's find out about that. COVID-19 shut in. Look, I'm channeling Hugh Brownstone. Well, the first thing I want to talk about is the DB button on the bottom of the uh, receiver that comes with a set of the Rode Go Wireless system. Um, I've heard people say that the DB button, when you adjust it, it increases the sensitivity of the microphone on the transmitter. And that's not true. Um, I've seen people say that it increases the output of what's transmitted from the transmitter to the uh, receiver, increases that signal. It doesn't do that either. Uh, and that's actually really easy to prove. We have a nice constant tone. You can see the volume, uh, the kind of the input volume there. And we see the output volume over here. So. The road transmitter is there. Its microphone is right up against the speaker of the iPad. And it's coming uh, wirelessly over to the receiver, and the receiver is plugged into the Zoom recorder. You can see the level that we have there. And if I go and press the DB button once, you see this level didn't change at all, but this level came up quite a bit higher. Um, so right now it's at minus 12 dB on the output of the receiver. Uh, it was at minus 24. I don't know if you can see the little triangle there. It's in the middle. And if we press it again, the triangle will be lit up all the way. And you see the volume jumped here. And now input one is flashing because that signal is too hot. It's too loud. Uh, coming out of the road, but you can see the input never changed. So what does the DB button do? It actually attenuates the output from the receiver to your host system, be it a PA or a camera uh, or your computer or whatever you've got this plugged into. And uh, there are three settings. Uh, you can think of them as low, medium, high. The low being uh, the setting like this where the triangle is basically empty and uh, that's minus 24 dB. You click it again and that's minus 12 dB, uh, the medium setting, if you will. And then if you click it again, uh, the triangle is full, that's zero dB. Uh, that's the full strength signal coming out of it, which frankly I find is too hot for things. Um, so I tend to use it on the medium setting or minus 12 dB. And that's actually what I'm doing right now on a separate set of Rogue Go Wireless. Uh, I have this, um, uh, lavalier mic connected to a transmitter like this that's behind me and it's transmitting to my G9 that's recording over there and the S1 is up here uh, looking at this and that's how I'm doing it. So that's what the button does and it's important to understand that um, the DB button doesn't have any impact on the transmitter. The second thing I wanted to talk about was the battery life and here you can see on the um, receiver uh, there's an indication, if you will, uh, of the relative battery life of the receiver and the transmitter. When the battery life starts to get really low, really, really low on the uh, transmitter, 
uh, you'll see the battery light starts to flash intermittently. And when there's only you know a few minutes left, then it starts to flash rapidly. Um, but there's another phenomenon that I found right at the end of the battery life. And that is that uh, I did a test with two uh, of these pairs connected to a Zoom H4 recorder. And I uh, filmed it with the, the S1 like I'm doing here, down looking at all this that I had set up. Um, visually, nothing really interesting happened. Uh, however, what was interesting is what got recorded, which was the signal out of the transmitter and receiver pairs. And that was uh, the introduction of a tone uh, in the last couple minutes of life of the battery. So with the one pair at exactly two minutes before the battery died, uh, we saw the introduction of a tone, uh, that was 1780 Hertz. And so that was weird. Uh, where did that tone come from? Was that something that Rode introduced as kind of a third warning? Uh, you know, really things are about to die because it flashed intermittently and then it flashed really quickly and now, okay, it's going to die. You've got two minutes. Could be, or it could just be a side effect of the voltage dropping in the battery and the electronics are like screaming, you know, we're going to die. We're going to die. Um, could be something like that. I have no idea. With the second pair of the Rode Go Wireless system that I've got, um, they started to make this sound at just over three minutes before the battery died. Uh, so one was exactly two minutes, one was three minutes and seven seconds, just kind of like the final warning, we are going to die, you better deal with the situation. Um, so that was really interesting. If you got that tone um, mixed into your audio, uh, with your software in post, you could use a parametric equalizer, set it to 1780 hertz, and take that, uh, that tone out. So that's not catastrophic, um, but of course it's warning you that it's about to die at any second. So that's, that's the end of that. The last thing I wanted to talk to you about was using these in the winter. Now, uh, like I said, I've got the Panasonic S1, I've got the G9, I've got the GH5. Um, all of those are uh, set to work at you know, minus 10 Celsius or 14 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's pretty cold, but it gets a lot colder than that in certain places in Canada. Um, so I wanted to know if I could use the Rode Go Wireless system outside, you know, say at minus 10, because that's what my cameras are rated to. Um, but I couldn't find anything in the documentation on the support site, or no one had really talked about this in the reviews. So I sent a note to Rode Support and, you know, God bless them, less than 24 hours later, I got this message. The note basically says that, yeah, sure, you can use the Rode Go wireless system at minus 10, but you'd want to manage potential condensation in the air capsule of the microphone, and obviously you're going to need to manage the battery life as well. So you would want to keep the transmitter and receiver inside your coat. Um, to keep them warm until you needed to deploy them into whatever it is you were recording in exactly the same way you would want to keep your camera batteries warm uh, during the time up until you needed to put them into use. So it's exactly the same thing with these things, but that's nice. That's pretty simple. Minus 10, minus 10, minus 10. Beautiful. There are some observations I had on the Rode Go Wireless system. Um, I think it's fantastic, but these are kind of some observations that I hadn't heard about before and uh, things that I thought were of value to share. Maybe that helps you out. Certainly if you live in cold climates uh, or we're wondering what the DB button does on the bottom of your receiver. Um, thanks so much for uh, watching. If you've got comments, drop them down below. Um, if you'd like to uh, help out, um, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, and if you want to subscribe, uh, hit the bell uh, so you get notified when the next one of these videos comes out. Um, that's it. Take care. Thanks.